Hey everybody, welcome back to the VMP Performance Channel. In front of me I have the latest belt drive component from VMP Performance. This is a part that we made to support those that are supercharging their 11 to 17 Coyotes with a top mount style supercharger such as a Roush or VMP. It's really the culmination of some stuff we've been working on. So let's go over to the car and I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, to get to the belt drive on this car, we're gonna remove the coolant tanks. They've already been unbolted. We're keeping the hoses hooked up and we're just gonna pull them off to the side. I've gone ahead and loosened up all three bolts that hold the spider bracket on. I'm gonna remove this last one and pull it out. All right, we've pulled the supercharger belt system off of Paul's car. This car originally had a Roush 2.3 liter supercharger on it, so it's got the full Roush grinding required belt system. It's a tried and true system that we've been using for years, but VMP recently came out with a no grind FIAD system for our Odin supercharger kits and our top mount style Gen 3 R supercharger kits. We ran into a couple of things that we wanted to address with that. First, customers converting to an Odin were not able to use their existing front cover because Odin relied on certain bosses to be present on the front cover that the Roush style FIAD system required you to grind off. That was problem number one. Problem number two is the no grind Odin style FIAD didn't provide the belt wrap needed for high boost, high horsepower situations when running a top mount style Gen 3R supercharger. On Odin, the supercharger pulley sits real low. It sits close to the idlers but on Gen 3 R, the pulley sits so much higher, the nearest idler is all the way down here, and we just don't have a good way to put a lot of pressure on the belt. This new part addresses that and provides some backwards and forwards flexibility. So let me show you what's going on over here on the table. As you can see, there's this big spider bracket. There's what we call the upper FIAD bracket. The tensioner's right here. These idlers control the belt as it comes off of the supercharger and as it feeds up onto the supercharger. There's a popular aftermarket bracket that sisters up right here and moves this idler a little bit closer. So what the VMP bomber bracket does is it allows you to remove this Roush upper FIAD bracket. Now we have the VMP bomber bracket. There's an idler down here the supercharger belt actually comes off of this, goes right to the crankshaft. This idler feeds the belt on its way up to the supercharger. And then there's an adjustable auxiliary idler that gets installed right here. And it can be adjusted to slide back and forth to increase or decrease belt wrap, or give you some more flexibility when running different size pulleys. One of the big challenges for us was to figure out how to make this system work with the legacy Roush style spider bracket and tensioner. Like I said, this part is tried and true. It works very well. It's a very heavy duty piece. This is a tensioner that works pretty well in the cast aluminum production form and VMP also makes an upgraded billet tensioner for it. So what we figured out is that we could take our no grind Fiat system and move this idler a little bit, build a spacer, and then line these two up right here. This gives customers a way to use the latest and greatest VMP no grind FIAD system and to still use the legacy Roush part if they've already cut their timing cover. This Roush part here provides two important functions. This idler right here does the same function as the ribbed idler that we call out in our VMP kits. And then of course you've got the tensioner functionality built into it too. This is great if you're deleting the AC too because you just have to run a shorter belt. These are the same 61 millimeter idlers used in our no grind Odin style FIAD kits. If you're going to eight rib, you're gonna need the heavier duty 58 millimeter narrow idlers. For those of you purchasing the bomber bracket, as part of an eight rib kit or to upgrade an existing eight rib kit, you will need to get the version that comes with the 58 millimeter idlers. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed on Paul's car, get it all put back together and show you how it works. All these bolts on the bomber bracket are all M8 by 60 millimeters long. It's going to come with these standoffs already Loctited into the bracket. There is 
one longer 80 millimeter bolt that goes right here. And we do provide two standoffs that total two inches long and a thin washer. You may or may not need the thin washer. You just want to test fit it and see how it feels. That longer 80 millimeter bolt ties into the intake manifold and gives you some additional reinforcement. It also gives you the ability to pull the bracket backwards a little or forwards a little bit if you have any belt alignment issues. I've gone ahead and gotten the bomber bracket installed. I've reinstalled the water pump pulley and the accessory belt. You can see that this idler is already torqued down. This idler is where the Roush spider bracket is gonna tie in. I've gone ahead and routed my belt. I'm gonna pop it in there. This is the last part of the installation. This little stepped washer goes between the Roush spider bracket and the upper idler on the VMP bomber bracket. If you're using the 61 millimeter idlers with the thinner 12 millimeter bearing, the washer is gonna go this way with the small side out. If you're using one of the heavier duty idlers like that included with the eight rib kit, which has a 14 millimeter wide bearing, you're gonna go ahead and flip this spacer around and the step is gonna go in. Let me show you. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the adjustable idler. This rides on the back of the bracket. This bolt and washer goes through the front and ties it all together. This T-nut has three holes. If you're running the smallest pulley and want the most amount of wrap, install it in this far right. Since Paul just has an 85 millimeter pulley, I'm gonna go ahead and install it in the center. I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose so we can slide it back and forth after we get the belt on. Even all the way to the left, this is still gonna provide a good amount of additional wrap. And if we slide it all the way to the right, it's gonna really start to wrap the supercharger belt. You can see even all the way to the left side and in the center hole, we're still giving the belt some extra wrap there on the supercharger pulley. I'm gonna slide it over a little bit, but keep in mind, this is a big pulley that should never have a slip problem to begin with. I got the bracket all bolted up. This particular part is really good if you're pushing the limits. If you're running a 75 millimeter pulley, you might need it. If you're running a 69 millimeter, 63, uh, that in-between 66 millimeter pulley that we made, you definitely need to have this. Um, what's really cool to me is that with parts like this, you can push the absolute limits of six rib with our supercharger system there's the potential to make 900, 950, even 1,000 rear wheel horsepower like John Hartman did on a freaking six rib belt. Just goes to show how efficient the 2650 Gen 3R is, how little power it takes to drive. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of extra wrap. Check out the links below to the products. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time.